Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening, nice to see everybody again. And in keeping with my usual practice of forgetting something, glasses. I always seem to forget something. Well, now I can see the needle a little bit better, we'll be carrying on with this uh, burst. That is peyote, peyote, something like that. Uh, bracelet that you see on in front of you. I love this. It's, um, well, as you can see, it's really flexible. I just love the feel of it. It's made out of uh, really shiny glass beads, although Mrs. Aragonat thinks it looks plasticky. I'm not sure whether that's the case myself, but uh, yeah, what they, it's an opinion. Right, Captain Derby, good evening. Welcome to the studio this evening. Let me get some beads out. I'm just going to weigh these. Size 10 beads. Don't know actually how many there are. They're coming uh, measured in grams usually. So I understand anyway. It would be interesting to know how many, how many grams I need for a bracelet. So, uh, I trust you are well today, Captain Derby. I think I'm waking up now, just before the stream. I was almost falling asleep. <laughs> so, potentially, the nearly wasn't a stream. <laughs> right. Let's see if I can just get hold of this rightly and get my hands into place where you can see what's going on. A little bit of my tea on my finger there. Right, aqua. We start sewing these. It is so easy on this first bead well, on any of them actually, to go into two of them by accident. I did it after the stream last night, I did a little bit more. And I kept doing it, and at one point I didn't notice it, and I had to backtrack a little bit. You're fine at the moment. <laughs> You're not going to be fine in 10 minutes' time, but you're fine at the moment. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, for the moment, it's better than not at all. Yes, I am, thank you, today. Um, I, with having the, uh, the migraine on Friday, I think it was, I do tend to... Uh, when that happens, have headaches for a few days. And I sort of had one this morning. It went away though, so at the moment I'm okay. I'm glad the constant coughing's gone anyway. That's kind of an unpleasant uh, thing to, be, to have to put up with all the time. See if I can get hold of this just slightly differently, then I can get a better angle on the needle. Get my finger caught. And green again.
Sun Tower. Well, this is about as exciting as this uh, stream will get, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it's uh, very much a rinse and repeat with this. Um, the pattern's clearly visible. So there's no um, no pattern to be revealed. Uh, tension's getting a little bit loose on this, so I'll have to make sure I keep pulling it tight. I'm not making a knot like that would have done. So this is just short of three inches at the moment, so it's got to be um, double this length and add a little bit. So with great detail it becomes great time <laughs> to misquote a, a, a phrase. It's, um, I always feel, well, it always, uh, the number of times that I've done this is not great, but in those times that I've done this, it feels really quite quick to do a row. But uh, doing, uh, you know, doing the, so you kind of expect the whole base slit to be quite quick as well, but it does seem that. There we go, I thought something was wrong with that. Um, it does seem somewhat uh, slow to build the length. I suppose it's not surprising given these are only about a 2mm diameter um, bead. Uh, so, what's that? 2.54, 25 to so 12, 12 rows is um, 13 rows, I suppose, is, is an is an inch so just odd it sort of feels uh, feels quicker than that I'm right. What am I right about Captain Derby? Sorry. This lag uh, means I've forgotten what I was saying. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks for the uh, for reminder. Yeah. It really is. I mean, even I mean, it doesn't uh, even two millimeters. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's said what to say thirteen to the inch. It still seems like I ought to be uh, progressing more. You know, I've just done what three. Uh, that yeah, I suppose. I mean, what uh, the sort of uh, the measurement um, after the stream seemed to indicate about ha uh, about half an inch per hour, and yet, so that sound kind of like saying about seven rows per hour. That's a um, yeah, seven rows per hour. And yet, I could swear I'm doing more than that. If I could manage to do one of these in about four hours, then it's, it becomes um, potentially viable to sell these or something, you know, a pattern done in this sort of stitching. But if it if it truly does work out at um, fourteen hours to do one of these things, then um, that's too expensive. Yeah, there is um, techniques of using looms to do this uh, this sort of thing really quickly, but um, generally speaking, they don't uh, work very well as bracelets when that happen when you use a loom. Apparently, they prefer to uh, um, loom work means that it it's preferable to actually glue the the uh, resultant thing to. Like a carrier of some kind, so like a metal bracelet, and so it becomes decoration rather than the bracelet itself. Wow! Fluffy Twiglet, good evening, welcome. <laughs> You're uh, quite good at that uh, that lurking stuff, um, Fluffy Twig. <laughs> That's okay. I 
That's kind of one reason why I'm glad I don't have to go anymore. Although technically I went to college rather than university, but eh. these days that's um, actually no, I went to a polytechnic rather than a university, but these days that's a um, minor distinction, if, the, if indeed there's a distinction at all these days. That doesn't look right. Why doesn't that look right? Mm, it does. <laughs> uh, they are indeed, they're two millimetre square, well they're not square, they're round, but um, they are two millimetres uh, diameter and two millimetres long. And these are, well, they're not the smallest, um, judging by the fact that these these are designated, so I understand, uh, to be ten, size ten, ten zero or something. Not quite sure what that means yet. Uh, but there are, uh, so people call them 10-0, there, there is a size called 11-0, which is the bigger the number, the smaller the bead. So, <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure how small the small ones are. It's, um, it's very nice for the um, for the detail you get with uh, with them because of the size, but... I was saying earlier, as you probably heard with uh, Captain Derby, it's um, seemed to be doing a lot and going through a lot of number of rows, but then it doesn't grow very fast. This thread is getting a little bit short. We'll come back uh, halfway down the, the next row and then we'll uh, tie this thread off and start a new one. At least Moobots here this evening. It, dis it disappeared for a while yesterday, and uh, Better Twitch TV is back again. That disappeared yesterday. Did you see the Doctor Who yesterday, um, Buffy Tweedler? I watched the uh, watched yesterday's episode this morning, but ow. I use sharp chisels and sharp knives, and I've jabbed myself with this needle more than I've ever done anything like that with the knives. I've done that wrong. Let's see if I can do this backwards without unthreading the needle.
Yeah, managed it. Good. That B that I'm just taking off now should have been purple. Did it? How did the TARDIS tell you that? I missed that one, uh, Fluffy Twiglet. I like the start, the Beethoven start. That was uh, an, in an interesting explanation of the story. But I, mi I, I missed, I missed that one. Um, I, I, I didn't certainly didn't think it was him in the box until, and, and until it looked like he was about to fall into it multiple times. <laughs> then I kind of thought it's probably him in the box, but. Um, Yeah, so we tied that knot now we do is and that knot basically just holds it everything in place so now we just go through a number of beads number being a um, whatever what we're essentially here doing here is just hiding the tail And that's somewhere, where's that? It's there. So I'll go back in that. And just go across a few. Pop out somewhere. There we will do. Oh, you're the... Um the, the donging bell, you mean? The, the cloister bell. That's supposed to be um, sort of like, you know, uh, uh, imminent uh, world collapse, isn't it? Or something. Um, okay, now I'm going to cut this thread off and I'm going to do that by getting my scalpel out because I don't have a pair of fine scissors to hand. Should get what they call a thread zapper. <laughs> Basically, is a small pyrography tool. Um, so I pull that tight. I get the scalpel pushed down and do that. And that should cause the thread to, by pulling it tight, I'm stretching it slightly so it pops back into the um, into the gap. Uh, yeah, he's, he has turned somewhat uh, into a rock doctor, hasn't he? And I guess, you, did you notice the theme tune had changed very slightly for this episode? They, they played the rock version of it. certainly a really sort of relatively speaking clever ending that's for sure let's do a bit longer thread on that let's go three Any more of this stuff, I probably will get one of those thread zapper things. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think next week it's back to the normal theme tune. I think that was just a one-off. I think it's the second time he's he's played. Um, well, whether it was actually him, but it's the second time that um, they've actually included um, the, the Doctor playing uh, playing music in the. Um, Uh, in the program so it, it, it's kind of like uh, that's going to feature somewhere in the f in the season finale now then I need to basically feed this in somewhere it's going the white I'm going to Now I'd prefer to come out of that white there. About that, there we go. So now I pull lots of thread through. on this still not okay not that much well what I'm gonna try and do here now is see if I can tie a knot so I'm gonna go down through that bead back up through the same side of the same bead but on the other side of the the thread that's in there that should allow me to tie a knot It would have done. If I'd have thought about what I was doing before I just did that, silly. Oh well. to come out of that white there so I want to go we'll come out there yeah that'll do I want it to avoid having this, having a tail, but because um, if I tied that knot I'd be able to cut this tail off, but I haven't so I can't, uh, until I get some more friction on the, uh, on the thread, which means more beads before I can uh, Dear. That's tied itself into a knot, that's not good. Let's see if I can unpick this.
<laughs> I'm waiting for them to um, rerun the last series. Was it the last series before? Because I can't. I I, um, I didn't actually watch all of it, so I don't quite understand her story. But you know she doesn't die because she's leaving the series um, at some point. So I don't think it'd be so. I don't know if she's leaving at the end of the series or. the Zygons. Oh, that, that, yes, it was that episode, wasn't it? It was that episode with, um, or oh, that that one with all with all the doctors, I think, if I remember rightly. All seven, or oh, not necessarily in that one. Um, I suppose it could be. I, I don't. I don't. I can't actually. I don't actually recall seeing whether or not she's actually going to uh, end the series, or um, whether she. Um, stops in the middle I don't think they'll kill her off though so I think she'll just um, leave possibly on some alien planet I suspect Yeah, if, um, I'd say you were missing something if you were interested in science fiction at all. You want her gone? Why? It's getting quite interesting from the point of view she, of... Um, she's getting, I wouldn't say as intelligent as the Doctor, but she's getting quite uh, quite good and in that respect. You watched today, Bubbles to Monkey. <laughs> what last night's episode um, I guess we should sort of go spoilers uh, and I can't do the voice um <laughs> is it spoilers no I can't do the voice um for those people watching <laughs> who may not have seen Doctor Who uh yeah she's moving on to something else but um Just dropped a bead, but I can't really see it. Spoiler way, it doesn't. It, most of the time, well, even, even with well, with Doctor Who, but most of the time, it doesn't bother me knowing how something ends. Oh, what you know, um, especially with well-written things like well-written science fiction, and Doctor Who is one of them, because it. Um, it's the story that's fascinating, you know, the end-to-end -end thing and how they get there. And yeah, I, when I um, when I used to read hard, not I was going to say hardcover paper books is what I meant to say. When I used to read paper books. When I'd go into the uh, the bookshop to to look for a book, 
I um, what I tend to do is just open if a book looked interesting, I just open it randomly in the middle uh, and just start reading. And uh, if after if you know if after a page, I still want it to read more, then generally speaking, I'd buy the book. Um, but if I didn't, then that would it just go back on the shelf. But um, that's kind of like yeah, reading in the middle and um, yeah. When I actually read the book uh, properly, end to end, you sort of get to that point and oh, I know what's going to happen next, but mm, so what? You can't stand this, like Every... <laughs> I think everybody um, has their own favourite uh, Doctor and uh, of course, every time there's a new one, they're always different, so... Um, and I, I think it just takes a little bit of getting used to. And then, uh, you know, it, it sort of, they sort of grow on you. And I've put the wrong bead on there. I mean, when he went on in the first, um, first episode, I wasn't fantastically keen on, uh, on Peter Capaldi, but, um, by the time we got uh, past the first few, then um, he was a lot. Uh, I find him a lot better. Uh, and um, I quite enjoy his style now. It's a different style, of course. And that's, uh, I guess, that's one of the nice things about the uh, about the Doctor. You can have a, a complete different change of style. Without uh, without ruining the program. Oh, weeping angels! Yeah. Of course, you know that means. You know what that means, don't you, Bubbles the monkey? You're carrying a weeping angel around with you. Uh, yes, he was. That's true. I think they've, as I say, I think they've all been good. They're just different, you know. Um, Chris Eccleston did uh, did suit suit it at that time to bring it back. It was a pity. Uh, well, I found it a pity he didn't actually continue for more than just the one uh, the one season. Doctor Who is a divides opinion. Okay, Clary Bug, then who was your favourite doctor then? Matt Smith. Uh, shouldn't matter. Matt Smith, Matt Smith. That was the la yeah, the last one, wasn't it, Matt Smith? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I kind of uh, yeah, uh, recognise names. <laughs> Clary Bug, thank you very much for following. Um, fish fingers and custard. Was that Matt Smith? Was that the one before? Hmm. I've lost track now. I was trying to think um, whether it was him or the, I thought fish fingers and custard was the one before him. Raggedy man. Um, oh no, it was Alon Z, wasn't it? That was the one before. Uh, yeah. Yes, 
The interesting one, of course, would have been the um, the War Doctor. See what that one would have been like. Yeah, Matt Smith's first episode. Yeah, I remember the. Uh, um, it, a lot of them had something. Um, the one before him was a cup of tea, wasn't it? I think. Hello, Junior. Sorry, you can't sit on my knee at the moment. I shall have to put you on the floor. Because there's a lot of thread, you'll just start... No, leave the thread alone. Come on. No. Sorry, Junior. Later. 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 <laughs> Alright, the later is now. <laughs> Uh, let me just see if I can settle him a little. Uh, tenant, that was the word I was looking for, David Tennant. Uh, patience for TP work. Mm. Patience is an interesting thing, Clary Bug. Uh, and it's often something that comes up on this stream, surprisingly. Um, doesn't well to me it doesn't feel like it needs patience um, the, the sort of my definition of patience is when you need patience when things are not going right are not going quite how you want them to go and uh, you know so you're getting annoyed at it if you like and then you're trying to um, sort of sort of whatever it is out with something like this it's sort of it's working it's going um, and I don't find you know patience doesn't come into it for me if you like because this is working it's, it's progressing I'm not um, I'm not having difficulty with actually doing it oh because it doesn't grow fast okay that I can understand, um, although of course you could always use bigger beads. <laughs> it's 10 millimeter beads, it grows really fast. Now, unfortunately, of course, this is now going to grow slower because I've got Junior on Mini, and uh, last night. When I was doing this, and he, after he'd been on many, he was trying to uh, catch the thread. Bow ties, fez. You remember the fez? Was it jumper? We had the Was it a cravat? I think he used to wear. Of course, he would. He'd, he'd always got the fancy coats. They've always had a gimmick of some kind. Yeah. Uh, okay, Clary Bug. Um, what's a goddess bracelet? Don't know the. Um, I don't know the term. And uh, to put it uh, mildly, I didn't know you were making uh, bracelets for my wife. Uh, let me permit you before you do, Clary, otherwise you'll get um, a timeout. There we go. Uh, 
and unwind the game. And of course, doing this with a cat on your knee is quite a pleasant thing, except, of course, you now I've now got to move sort of relatively unnaturally to avoid him. <laughs> and uh, it's, it'll make me arm tired before, before very long. Yes, hello. I know you want me to stroke you, but I'm busy. Because you're there, I've got to play games with this thread all over my desk. got a knot in this yeah you should be okay for the moment Clary that before I sort out this knot. Okay. So that that's basically two Two, two thongs with beads on is that is that wire wrapping then between the uh, or is it just another another um, golden thread interesting looks good oh jump rings ah Ow. Clever use of jump rings, is that? No, don't do that. I was about to do something quite silly there. There we go. The more of this um, sort of jewellery type stuff I do, and to find out about and stuff like that that you've just uh, posted there uh, Clary Bug and they're more fascinated actually because with, with all of the jewelry making it's amazing what you can what you do or what you know what you can do and what how things end up uh, Junior you may end up having to go on the floor I think Okay, so you're putting the bead, you're putting the jump rings on as you go along rather than afterwards. Ah, I suppose that makes sense. Mm. Oh, 
Well, maybe uh, maybe I'll have to try that. Uh, I have plenty of jump rings. <laughs> I actually even have some uh, some of that uh, cord as well. But that's um, that was to try some bead uh, some beading some um, braiding with. I thought I'd also try um, a little bit of that um, Kumahimo braiding. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing seems to work best with sort of the dark, darker and dark, darkish metallics. I say that sort of thing. It's um, yeah, it's kind of the same uh, with one or two other crafts as well. The darker metallics always sort of look um, look good. Yeah, tiger tail thread. Oh, okay. Yeah, I prefer class. I've seen certain things done with buttons, but I don't really like the um, the look of them. The clasps are... Uh, I, I like clasps, proper clasps. The only problem... Well, the only problem I've got making them for... Uh, if I make anything for Mrs. Aragon Art, I have to use sterling silver or, or gold clasps can't use uh, gold plated or silver plated because um, <laughs> she just dissolves the plating off in a matter of hours uh, on the watch strip oh, okay um, this sort of um, beadwork can be done on a loom and if you do it on a loom um, then it's preferable I understand to actually fasten it to something so you know, things like a watch strap <laughs> no 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 Junior that's my thread let go please no Junior let go thank you <laughs> he was biting at the thread um, yeah, you can um, you can uh, you, you can glue the uh, the resultant ribbon to uh, to something like a watch strap or a bangle, and uh, it it progresses a lot faster than uh, Clary Book. If it's something that interests you, um, take a look at um, uh, bead weaving on looms, because you do a whole row in one go. rather than one bead at a time, which I'm doing here. Junior, there are times when I really do wish you weren't on my knee. So yes, creative streamers, look what I have to put up with, pussycats on my knee. <laughs> and I still have to keep doing the creative bit at the same time.
And I can't put the thread over the top of his back because it, it'll irritate him and he'll keep leaping around or leaping back trying to lick at whatever it is that's disturbing his fur. So. I suppose, uh, Clary Bug, that um, it just uh, you know, multiple wits then just becomes a case of sequencing all the jump rings properly. Um, I was thinking, I sort of thinking, would that be easy to put on afterwards? And it probably wouldn't actually, because they'd be quite tight, I imagine. Sure, you won't like to go sit on the computer at the other end of the desk, Junior. No chance. That bead is wrong. That should have been a white bead, not a purple one. I seem to be doing rows quite quickly and yet this isn't going that fast. <laughs> As I was saying earlier to Captain Derby, it seems weird. I can do rows relatively quickly and yet... I know two millimetres isn't very much but... There's only 16 to the inch. Well, 13 to the inch. to uh, at some point just stop and uh, just tie, um, what's the word I'm looking for sewing those uh, these loose threads just to get rid of them
fold it this way a little bit then the threads don't wrap tend to wrap themselves around the rest of the bracelet quite so much it's one of those little tips that nobody ever tells you about but you sort of find out uh, with uh, with a bit of practice uh, and I want teal uh, teal aqua Maybe Fluffy Twiglet, you should have made Doctor Who your uh, your uh, subject for this year's college. That way, you could have done virtually anything you like, and nobody could have told you it was wrong. You're a two-dimensional mon monster, and people would uh, if people say no, then no, that's not right. You can't have a two-dimensional monster. You could then, of course, point to that uh, episode where that's precisely what they had. People who cannot read makes you wonder how they actually managed to survive. Got another knot. I had another knot. Okay, let's see if I can get rid of that without tying a third knot. Uh, no. This stuff is getting worse than jump rings. Should be going where. a lot of the tutorials for doing things like this they always talk about and you always sort of say don't worry about the um, the thread it sorts itself out you know yeah right sorts itself out into big knots
need to give my arm a rest. <laughs> At least he's curled around a little bit so I can get a bit closer to what I'm doing. Maybe I won't use such a long thread next time. Used about nine feet of thread this time, uh, where I've been using six before. Mind you, without a pussycat around, it's probably a bit easier to manage the longer threads. Right, I need some more purple beads. I'll have to actually look at a colour chart because there's reputedly sort of hundreds of different colours, well, lots, tens and tens <laughs> of different colours of these things. Uh, such to the point that you can make sort of almost photorealistic um, painting uh, pictures. Obviously pixel based, but you can get that many colours that um, photographs look, uh, look quite realistic. Hello. Right, Junior, you can go back to sleep. No, that's my thread. Yep, says it's steady. You going to get down? You going to get down? No. You're not going to get down? You're going to settle. Okay, you're settling. tend not to argue very much with uh, Junior. He's got bigger teeth <laughs> and sharper claws. And he's not afraid to use them. If 
there's anybody that's watching doesn't know what it is that they're looking at despite the uh, stream title um, this is a let me get rid of the um, glare off that camera a little bit a little bit if this will just settle there we go um, this is a beadwork fairly obviously I guess but it's uh, these are little glass beads um, I'm making a bracelet this is called peyote stitch whether that's got anything to do with the Indian traditions or not I know I don't know but that's what it's called in fact it, more specifically it's called even count peyote it's called even because there's an even number of beads across the row which is vertical in this particular case so that's the way I'm sewing it. Uh, there is a style called Odd Count uh, Peyote, which, not surprisingly, has an odd number of um, beads across the row. Reputedly, most people don't like doing the odd. Don't really see what the problem is, but well, I do kind of understand what the problem is when you're doing this in even. You turn it, you know, as you turn around, you just carry on doing the same thing time after time. With um, with an odd count peyote, when you get to the end of the row, you have to play a little bit of games with the thread to get it to come out in the right place and to actually anchor down the last bead of the row, or the first bead of the row, whichever way you happen to be going. Um, but the uh, it's a bit stiff there. Um, So these are um, these are a Japanese bead as well. They are they have the reputation of being the best on the market because they are uh, extremely regular. Um, they don't vary in size between individual beads very much, and the beads themselves are generally uh, you know, a relatively regular size. And these are a set, well, the, the, I don't know what quite what the numbers mean, but this the number uh, these are a size 10 O bead 10 slash 0. Uh, I do know that the larger the number, the smaller the bead. So 11 O is smaller than this. Uh, and if you go to 8 O, it's larger. I understand it all these beads are actually made from a, you know, a, a long tube of glass which is then drawn down smaller and smaller until you get the size of the bead so it started off as quite a large colored tube and then got uh, pulled basically so just like you pull a piece of toffee or something like that it gets thinner and thinner and thinner until they get the size that they want um, and I'm using here a beading needle which is different from a sewing needle in at least a couple of ways it's not as sharp not particularly sharp at all uh, it's a lot thinner and flexible this bends quite easily to help go through the beads and um, also it's longer than a normal sewing needle so you can put lots of beads on the needle Uh, and it also means you can thread it through quite a long distance um, quite you know, relatively easily and then, like normal sewing needles they do come in different sizes as well different sort of thicknesses or diameters of needle now what I'm actually making here is a kit and I got the kit to um, to see whether I liked doing this craft or not. Uh, and by getting the kit, I made sure I got all the um, all the bits that I needed to do uh, to do it. So I didn't sort of forget anything and then you know, have to um, go out and buy it um, or 
you know, buy huge quantities when I you know, and discover I didn't like it, I'd have huge quantities of things left over. So buying a kit to start with is a really good if you want to try something out, it's a really good way of doing it. Yes, it works out more expensive ultimately, but um, if you didn't like it, it works out a heck of a lot cheaper. Now, this particular kit is from a company uh, which is actually from the States called Beadaholic. And they do some really nice, um, really nice kits. This is the first one that I've had from them. Um, I have bought some of their materials before, but this is the first kit. And uh, relatively impressed by the kit. Came in well, relatively impressed in in in, some, in, in the kit, not necessarily in the way I bought it. Um, it was actually bought on Amazon, and uh, the seller described as Beadaholic UK, the UK arm of Beadaholic. Uh, and you tend to think that it would be um, delivered from the U you know, in the UK from the UK. Uh, no, it came from the States. So instead of me expecting to see it in sort of two or three days, um, it took about uh, ten days to arrive. Which of course, when you're there wanting, waiting for it, is a little bit. Because nowhere that, that I saw, at least when I was looking did I see it sort of saying anyway this is going to come from the States and this is going to take you know this amount of time I mean I know they give you an estimated time but you know like 10 days and things like that but quite often you you, you see that a lot on Amazon and they're dispatched you know immediately and they arrive a day or so later and um, they just give him give themselves sort of the 10 day thing to uh, in case so I do find it uh, you know, so that you know it would have been nice to see explicitly said you know this is going to come from the States therefore you know the 10 days really is 10 days but apart from that the kit came in a lovely box which is effectively a, a normal jewel well looks like a normal jewelry box presentation box so you know once you've constructed the kit it's um, more than possible to put the put the kit into back into the box you know the um the finished bracelet back into the box now i am making an assumption here because there is a label on the box and i haven't tried to take the label off yet but I'm, i am assuming it's going to come off fairly easily if it doesn't well yeah I haven't really lost anything, but um, if it does come off really easily, I've got a, a nice presentation box, which would be uh, a good thing from the from the perspective of the kit. So I'm just trying to untangle this tangle. So uh, from the perspective of the kit itself, uh, yeah, I, relatively speaking, give it full marks, so to speak. The instructions themselves, I know what I'm doing, therefore I could read the instructions. It's a bit hard, obviously, to judge them when you don't know what you're doing. But I, having seen, actually having seen this particular bracelet made, because they do uh, provide a video on YouTube. So you can actually see it uh, being constructed. You can see all the instructions, uh, which which I find a very good way, make it, making it very easy to uh, to pick up the kit and just work with it. So I can certainly recommend this kit. Any future ones I'll be doing, there won't be from kits. There'll be. Um, from well, I was about to say raw materials, but from the uh, individual components, I'll be designing my own. And 
this should get a little bit easier as this leg gets shorter which of course it is with every bead I'm putting on the, the lines getting shorter and if you do hear me calling this line rather than thread that's just um, Uh, I don't know how to quite have to describe it. It's um, I used to go fishing, and this thing re highly resembles fishing line. And so I'm quite likely to call it fishing line or line. In actual, in actual fact, it probably wouldn't surprise me if it if it really was fishing line. Um, it does. Um, it, it's a, a make of thread, shall we say, called fire line. I'm sure. I, I'll have to look it up, but I'm fairly sure that used to be a manufacturer of fishing line. Okay, so now I've got, let's work out which way do I have to pull this to undo that knot. This is not what I wanted to spend all the evening doing on doing knots. Now I don't go off the end. See if we can sort this out. There we go, it's gone. If I didn't have Junior next to me, I'd be dropping this thread down down towards the floor just to keep it out of the way whilst I'm uh, pulling it through, but um, I can't do that with Junior here. As I say, it'll go across his fur, which would immediately uh, annoy him. No, I didn't, uh, Captain Derby. I mean, that's... that. I, I don't actually... I mean, I, I know when, when someone exports something, like from the States, it is possible to pay in advance the import fees at the other end so I don't know if they were doing that uh, but in any case the kit value is below the threshold at which they bother to collect duty and I think it's also below the level at which they um, they collect VAT as well so I certainly wouldn't have been particularly happy had I suddenly got a, a bill because um, it would probably have been the post office that would have presented the bill and they had about £10 just for their fee so it, you know, even if it's sort of like 50p of VAT you then get a £10 charge um, which would not have been welcome in fact I think if I had got a £10 charge I'd have probably refused the parcel just on the on the uh, the basis that it wasn't worth paying the extra. It does uh, it does mean that probably in the future I wouldn't buy from you know Beaderholic UK 
on Amazon for that reason because I don't know whether I'll, uh, I'd get charged uh, duty and VAT in the future. Which is a pity as they do have some nice stuff. £8, yeah. And you can't get around it. Mm, yeah, no, it's alright, don't worry about the uh, there and there. Most of the time though, or quite a lot of time though, because of that duty and the charge, um, it makes buying anything from the states a little bit, um, well generally speaking, it makes it not worth it most of the time. Uh, if you're lucky and you don't get charged, or you know, it doesn't get picked up, then you know it can be worth it, but um, Effectively, since everything is supposed to be electronically declared these days, you can't get away with it. Every single parcel gets um, gets caught. Junior. It's nice having your mini pussy cap, but there are times when I wish you weren't. I wonder what the trade-off is in having longer threads so you don't have to tie off things and change threads so often against the extra time it takes to actually pull the extra thread through. Because that's why people use you know, long threads um, is because it, you know, of the perceived long time it takes uh, to change you know to, to weave in, weave the old thread in and weave a new one in but must uh, you know the time taken to pull such long threads through must uh, must add up I'm wondering if it is just a perceived you know, it's quicker to have long threads um, rather than an actual Oops, I need some white beads out. <laughs> I 
I can see if I did enough of this stuff, I'd end up with a with a right arm that's really strong because uh, of all the exercise, and a left arm that does next to nothing. <laughs> uh, I need to do a bit of exercise. This arm is really junior, junior pussy cat. You don't care as long as you've got a knee that you like to lay on, don't you? Get that thread out of the way. You going? Don't lay on the desk. You are going to lay on the desk. No, you're not going to lay on the desk. Let go. Let me put you on the computer at the end. You go sit there. You lay there. And I will just put something down there, which might just persuade him not to come back that way. Uh, right. I can sit at the desk properly. I think he might just curl up. With a bit of luck, he'll curl up and not try and come back. I like him, and I like him sort of mini. It's kind of, because it's unusual for him to, to, to do that, as I say. He was a feral cat originally. And it was years before he would even uh, sort of trust anybody enough to let you touch him. Um, and now he, he sort of sits on my knee, but um, yeah. No, Junior, don't. No, no, no. Don't. <sighs> Sorry, Junior, but please don't come back this way. Not just yet. You lay there, be a good boy, and lay there. Or better still, go go see Mrs. Aragonat and sit on her knee. Yeah. Sorry. It's his bed as well as this, you see. He curls up on his. This is his current position to curl up and sleep on a night. He's in. He's just where this is. I, I'm not going to be able to do this if he uh, move that camera and move those pliers because he'll know the spiky ones. I'm not making him stay up. He can go to sleep elsewhere. Oh, His bedtime is about 24 hours a day. No. Ow! No! That's not very nice. Don't bite me. Don't put your teeth on me. I am... Um, I think guys, no, that's, look, Junior, I think guys, that's it for tonight, let go, come on, stand up, stand up, can I have my beads back please? Mm. I 
and now of course I have beads all over the floor I'm afraid guys it, well it is not he is mad he's annoyed that I was pulling the red cloth out from underneath him but can you see how he's laid let me um, let me zoom the camera out and just <laughs> what he's done and if I, if I just manually zoom out he is laid right across the desk uh, so I'm afraid that's gonna be it for tonight um, you, I've tried to move him twice and he's come back he's gonna keep doing that so I don't stand a chance of keeping him away, to be honest. Uh, I, I said dig. <laughs> ISUK dig. Good evening. It's a cat indeed. Uh, poor Junior. Uh, I don't know about poor Junior. How about poor Zaragan Art? I can't do anything now. He's laid right... Yeah, you know, He's not curled up in the small bit at the end behind the monitor. He's spread all over the desk. I don't have a choice, I, I guess you can dig. If I now try and move him, he is likely to bite me. He, he's already put his teeth on me three times. So, and that's his kind of, you know, I could bite you, but I'm just being gentle type of uh, warning. And you probably heard him um, complain. So I'm afraid that's it for this evening. Um, are you going to let me get those two beads that are there? Because I don't want him eating the beads either, which he quite possibly might do. I know they're small glass beads, but just stream the car. <laughs> oh dear. And I'm sure a lot of people would actually probably do watch that. If it, if it curled up nicely over there, then I'd have turned this camera around and let you let you watch him. But um, he is, um, you can't see it on this camera. Let me just, uh, see if I can show you, show you his face. But he's got a real, yeah, he's got a real suspicious look on his face. He's, he's closed his eyes now because I've moved the cable around his feet. Um, yeah, he's got his eyes open. You can't see them on here, but um, he has his eyes open, uh, and he's what he's doing is he's watching, and uh, his tail's flicking, which is a sure indication he's getting um, suspicious. Yeah, yeah, I can stroke him like that. He's quite happy. He just uh, yeah. Can't touch his feet and I can't lift him. But he'll quite happily let me stroke him. Let him sleep. Well, I've got no choice, Fluffy Twiggler. I've got no choice at all. The only thing is, I could take a still picture. He's not likely to move at all. I could take a, a still picture and stream that and you wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I might as well get on with some other things. Because I can do some work at that end of the desk on the other monitor. So. Um, but I just can't do any, uh, any streaming from over there. It's just I don't have the space. So I'm going to um, what I'm going to do is remind everybody who's watching that hasn't checked out the shop. They might like to do so. Um, there could be some uh, some nice things in there for Christmas presents or birthday presents for people. Um, I think so, of course. But there again, I make them, so I would think that, wouldn't I? Um, <laughs> pass it on to family and friends. You never know; somebody might. Uh, might be interested in, in some of the stuff that's there. It does support the uh, the stream, so um, take a look. Um, apart from that, 
what I'm going to do is the usual thing, which is to say, if you're not stream, if you're not streaming, why aren't you streaming? Um, no, if you're not following, why not? You get to see this pussy cat when he uh, turns up from time to time and does things like this. Um, but push the follow button. I appreciate it. But if you don't want to, that's okay. If you just want a notification of when I go live, you can follow me on Twitter. A tweet goes out when I go live. It's at Zoganart and the details are below the stream window. I will shortly be on the end plate. If you just want to try and catch me, my next stream will be tomorrow night. From about 8pm UK time, 1900 hours UTC, GMT, same thing. Or about two hours ago. It was 8 o'clock. But tomorrow. Thank you all. Uh, ISUK, I agree. They are awesome. And amazing. Each with their own personality. Um, sometimes better than others. Thank you all. Hope to see you again in the studio in the future. And maybe even I'll have some space to stream from. <laughs> and maybe not. Bye-bye.